I need to tell you about a deck that gets far less attention than it deserves. That deck is Cold Wave Monarchs, created by Aleph Ya2. I have my own version of this deck that I'm going to show you today, but first I need to give you some background and explain why you need to care about this deck. Welcome to Goat Duels everyone, I'm ACP, now let's dive in. Now Aleph Ya2 is arguably the best player in Goat format in terms of tournament results, but because he's been winning with such a very unique style, I feel like he gets slept on and written off. We also saw this in the past with Dingo Sig and his Chaos Return deck. If I were to ask someone to make a tier list of GOAT format decks, most people would likely forget to even put Cold Wave Monarch on the list at all, even though it is undoubtedly one of the best decks in the current meta. Okay, so let's talk about why this deck is so good. It's a very interesting strategy that doesn't cleanly fall into a neat little box. Is this deck combo, control, or anti-meta? The answer is all of the above. In a way, the playstyle of this deck reminds me a lot of Goat Control because of the way that you go for some chip damage in the early game, accumulate resources, and then set up a game shot when you get the chance. That game shot could come from Monarchs, DLS, or Premature Burial, but in this deck, Cyberstein is really key. I still think that Cyberstein is one of the most slept on cards in GOAT format. I've already profiled two other decks on this channel featuring the card, so you should go watch those videos after you're done with this one. But I really love Cyberstein in this deck, so much that I even added Last Will as an additional way to search it out. Last Will has been massively overperforming for me, and it's definitely a card that you need to play in this deck. Monarch plus Last Will for Cyberstein is 7,300 damage, which has sealed plenty of games for me. Trap Deshute is a newer addition to this deck, and one that is not mandatory. I really like it in this deck though, because it's good to confirm that the coast is clear before you go for that big play with Mobius or Cyberstein. Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer is also a newer anti-meta choice. It goes well with Deshute to beat up on the Chaos decks. This deck is definitely one of the best choices in a Chaos meta, as we just have so many ways to overwhelm them. In GOAT format ladder, I played this deck in 50 matches to see how it would stack up against the meta, and my record was an astonishing 44 and 6, a win rate of 88%. It is not hyperbole when I say that this deck has given me better results than any deck I've ever played. That's right, better than Chaos and better than Library FTK. This deck simply does not lose unless your opponent gets extremely lucky or you make some pretty big misplays. Alright, now let's talk about the decklist. We're playing 4 Monarchs here, 2 Mobius and 2 Zaborg. And those who follow this channel know that I've been preaching Zaborg's strengths against Chaos for a long time now. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to hear about all that spicy GOAT format tech before all of your friends. Mobius isn't nearly as good against Chaos, but it is quite strong against Panda Burn, which is one of the strongest decks in the meta right now. It also has massive synergy with Cold Wave. The idea is that you wait until your opponent has two set cards, activate Cold Wave, and then pop them both with Mobius. This is very similar to the Cold Wave plus Jezeris combos that dominated Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2008. As far as our lights go, we've got five lights to support our BLS, and Magician of Faith isn't super good in this deck, doesn't have a lot of synergy. We're only playing one Book of Moon, no Tsukiyomi, no Metamorphosis. Um, but it is, of course, still great at getting back Trinity, and it does give us those five lights for that BLS, which, of course, is a game-ending card. We've also got a Tomato package that you'll notice. We've got two Mystic Tomato, Sangin, uh, Cyberstein, Spirit Reaper, and you can even search out Gravekeeper Spy at a pinch. And what's so great about this engine is a couple of things. So one thing is that we can set our Mystic Tomato um, turn one, and if they run it over with something, maybe they attack and do it with a Blade Knight. Our Mystic Tomato searches Sangin. We can tribute Sangin for Monarch, go plus one. Alternatively, sometimes your opponent attacks over your Mystic Tomato, you search Cyberstein, and then maybe next turn you play a Cold Wave and just win. Um, of course, searching Spirit Reaper is good too. Um, Spirit Reaper is not really a standard choice in this deck, but I decided to play it for a couple reasons. One, great with Mystic Tomato, as we said before. Two, it is also a pretty decent target for Last Will. Now, Last Will is normally going to get Cyberstein in this deck, but sometimes you maybe don't have enough life points for it, or um, you just don't want to do it for whatever reason you think there's a better play available. 
Um, you will notice that in my games, I do go last will for Spirit Reaper quite a bit. Uh, pretty common play is our opponent sets like maybe just a monster turn one. We open Exiled Force, Last Will. We go, okay, boom, Last Will, Exiled Force, kill your monster. Last Will, get Spirit Reaper, discard a card in your hand, go plus one. Gravekeeper Spy is a really important card in this deck. Um, a lot of the lists actually play three copies because it's just that good. Here I only played two because I felt like I didn't have enough room for it. But it's just great tribute fodder for those monarchs, so that's really why we're playing it here. And of course, um, still pretty strong against a lot of the aggro decks in this format. As far as the Kaiku goes, I feel like in this slot you can either play Abyss Soldier or Kaiku as that extra beat stick. Um, you can try to go both if you want, but again, you have to find room. Kaiku, of course, very good in the Chaos meta. We're basically just playing this as an anti-meta card, um, you know, put our Chaos opponents under pressure. Um, you can play that Abyss Soldier. Um, Abyss Soldier does have some mild synergy with Cold Wave, as we can Cold Wave use Abyss Soldier to bounce back their back row. They can't set it next turn. Uh, Abyss Soldier also much better against Tsukiyomi than Kaiku is. Um, Abyss Soldier, we can even discard uh, Mobius as a water in a pinch. So I feel like it's going to depend on the meta. If you expect a lot of Chaos decks, Kaiku is going to be better. If you expect a lot of Goat Control decks, Abyss Soldier is going to be better. Of course, as we all know now, Chaos is a lot more common than Goat Control. I also briefly want to talk about Breaker because... Everyone knows that Breaker is a pretty strong monster, but this card is just so good in this deck. Uh, a very common play that I do right now is I use Cold Wave with Breaker. Uh, Breaker attacks over something with its 1900 attack, and then main phase two, you remove the counter, kill us at Spell or Trap. So Cold Wave plus Breaker runs over Kaiku, runs over Golem Sentry, uh, runs over Ninja Grandmaster, runs over 1600 attack Blade Knight. So... It's just so good for killing your opponent's monster and putting them under lockdown from Cold Wave next turn. Um, so not too much to talk about with regards to the spells. Um, you'll notice we're not playing Mystical Space Typhoon. That's in the side. Um, depending on the matchup, sometimes Cold Wave is a little underwhelming for me. So I, I would consider just main decking one Cold Wave, putting the, the Mystical Space Typhoon in the main. Again, that depends on the meta, depends on your exact list, depends on your experiences with the card. Brain Control, that's, that's kind of a unique card that we're playing. Uh, we do have four Monarchs, so we are going to play that Brain Control. Uh, some people might even be wondering why we don't play more copies of Brain Control. I do have the second Brain Control on the side, but you know one issue is in a Cyberstein deck, we don't want to be paying too many life points. So one brain control has been the perfect amount for me. It's the standard number. You really don't need more than that. But great for comboing with your monarchs. Um, even great for setting up game shots. As far as traps go, we got just kind of the standard four power cards plus the two dust shoots. We talked about dust shoot already. Great for setting up your OTKs. Um, I won't go over the side deck too much because none of it's super important. Side is a little thrown together. Feel free to change it if you want. Gotta have that third Mobius though, um, there definitely are some decks in the meta where you do want to side that third Mobius in. Uh, you want it against Warriors, you want it against Burn, even against decks like Library FTK, you want that uh, third Mobius. And then the, the King Tiger Wangu, that's another card that I want to talk about. Goat Control, believe it or not, I think is making a little bit of a comeback. It's kind of this niche sort of almost anti-meta choice with, you know, Golem Sentries and Creature Swaps. And Goat Control can be a rough matchup for us. You know, Creature Swap is pretty good against us. Scapegoat is pretty good against us. Metamorphosis is pretty good against us. So I wanted something to attack Goat Control. You could do King Tiger Wangu. You could do Azura Priest. You could even go something like Chain Disappearance. But, you know, again, that's just kind of whatever you feel the best call is. Personally, I like King Tiger Wangu as kind of that uh, floodgate that attacks for 1700 against Go Control, but it's your call. Since I am playing Mystic Tomatoes, I also like to side New Dorian in these kinds of decks. Um, we just bring it in against Aggro. We've also got a little mini warrior package here. Um, if we bring in one of these two warriors, um, I bring in the reinforcement of the army with it, because you'll see here we do have two warriors in the main deck, so we can go to three and bring in that Rota. Mystic Swordsman, of course. For things like Chaos, Zombrea against Aggro. Royal Decree, that, that's another thing that, that you can side in. You'll notice we're not playing very many traps in the main deck. Only uh, six. So against Warriors, what I'll typically do is I'll side out these Dust Shoots, uh, side out the Call, and then just bring in those two Decrees. Go with the three traps plus two Decrees against Warriors. I like that a lot. Threatening Roar, 
just for the combo decks. Can be decent in the mirror. You can chain it to Cold Wave. Um, also good against Reasoning Gate, although not a lot of people really play that anymore. So yeah, if you have any other questions about the list, just feel free to leave a comment. To talk more about the matchups briefly, I really think that this deck has mostly strong ones. Your typical Thunder Dragon Chaos deck is easy to beat because they can't stop your OTKs and we have Trap Dust Shoot. Warriors are also easy to beat because we have Cold Wave combos and good defense with Tomato and Spy. Goat Control and other decks with Scapegoat can be a little tougher, but it's still quite winnable. You just have to watch out for Scapegoat mainly. I think Burn is about an even matchup in Game 1, but we've got more Mobius and Decree in the side, which gives us the edge post side. We actually have a pretty decent matchup against Combo, because Cold Wave, Cyberstein, Trap Dust Shoot, and Kaiku are all strong against those decks. I actually destroyed a Reasoning Gate deck the other day, just by going Cold Wave plus Magician of Faith to time walk them for multiple turns. Honestly, I'd love to give you a balanced view here and talk about all of this deck's bad matchups, but I just can't find very many. Even the off-meta decks like Gravekeepers and Chaos Recruiter are good matchups too. We just get them with Cold Wave combos and Cyberstein just like everyone else. So if you've been unsatisfied with your results in GOAT format, I'd encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and try a less mainstream deck like this one. Remember that you need broad knowledge of the meta in order to become a world-class player. I just picked up this deck completely on a whim one day, and I was shocked by how strong it was that I just couldn't stop playing it. So give this deck a shot and let me know how it works out for you in the comments. If Aleph Yatu can win GOAT format tournaments over and over again with this deck, you can too. Thanks for watching everyone. I've been working really hard on these videos lately, so your support means so much to me. And I can promise you that GOAT Duels will have even more great content coming at you soon. There's going to be new uploads every week, hopefully even two uploads a week. Take care, everyone.